Well, to discuss the state of affairs, as we see MSME is trying to survive and meet the current challenges, I'm now being joined live from our Abuja studio by the director, Nigerian small scale industrialist, Dr. Henry Imojo. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. I can hear you. Thank you very much for still staying with us, Dr. Henry. Let's start off our conversation now with your take on this heightened inflation and now the fuel scarcity that MSF, MSMEs have to deal with, especially at a time like this when it is difficult to do business. You see, uh, MSME in Nigeria at this moment, we're actually in our news. It's not just crippling, it's already crippled. Because if you look at the statistics as it stands, um, um, inflation rate at 17.7 and then a lending rate at 30.6 percent in Nigeria. And then when you look at the AGO price, uh, which is actually the, the major uh, vehicle to drive the, the economy at uh, from uh, 300 uh, naira per liter to 900 per liter as it stands today, it's become very difficult and then for the MSME to survive. Because the survival rate of MSME in this Nigeria, as it stands today, uh, uh, become very, very impossible. And then he found out that the, 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 the impact on our, on, our, on our economy will be that people will lose their job and then companies will close down. It is happening. And then if we continue and there's no an emergency intervention by federal government to make sure that the price of AGO comes down to normal so that, so that we can be able to see how we move forward. And then in moving forward, there must be a kind of a, a strategic uh, uh, physical policy. And then away from the financial policy, there must be a strategic uh, 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 for physical policy to put in place that the price of AGO is brought normal so that even if it's for six months, that uh, uh, the, 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 the companies can run because there is no light, the, the, the power grade is down to, at this moment, and then the price of AGO is high. You can find out that no production lines if you are producing at about 80% capacity, this period, they find out that you have, your production line is less than 40%. So you can't do anything. I, I will tell you at this moment, as a, as a Nigerian, as a, as a real set of player, and then as a perspective from our, for one association and our member, they find out that we have to do something urgently. It is a time that government will take a, 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 a very important step to make sure that the price that the, this, the oil is casted, that is illumined, that is happening right now, and then the price are cut down. If they might have to return a subsidy for AGO, they may have to do it uh, temporarily and then cover that up from other aspects of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the economy to make sure that things work. If we don't do that, if I know that, uh, I tell you, we may lose more work, we may lose more job more than we had during the COVID. We may lose, uh, a company may close <coughs> more than we had during the COVID. So it is important that Nigeria, at this moment, the government stand up and do what it's supposed to do. Ease of doing business in Nigeria is difficult. Nigeria is one of the countries that is difficult to do business. And then if that will continue, it find out that we are not making any progress. Instead, we will make one, one step ahead and then ten steps backward. Imagine how in a, in a nation that is already producing, and then we can buy diesel at 900 naira. Who will fuel his company with? Who will fuel the industry with that? It become difficult. The haulage industry, the price have gone hundred and five hundred percent. If you buy diesel, what can you do? So, if another is a difficult moment for us at this moment, yes, and then Dr. we need a, a special intervention by government. Let's stay a little yes. longer now with this unease that you're making mention of and solutions that we can also have as part of the survival tactics at the yes. peak of COVID. We saw MSMEs forced to lay off about two-thirds of their workforce, rethink operational strategies. Now, with the challenges of the times now, what sort of out-of-the-box strategies do you think MSMEs can deploy now? Like you've also made mention of, you see corporate institutions like banks cut down their working hours due to this diesel crisis. Let's talk about this. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are not just going to look at uh, out of bus. We also have to look at in the bus. For instance, in this time for you to survive, the, the strategy is very clear. You must train down your, your workforce, and then you must train down what you need to train down, and then you must, any every expenditure you must not undertake at this season, you must take it away. You must make sure that, you must make sure they have the necessary skill 
that you need to, that means that you need to upgrade your skill to make sure that your, your, your performance, your production line is an optimum, and then you must make sure that if you need to dance, if you find out they need to employ more technology, industry have to employ more technology this season. If you, people have to work remotely, they may have to work remotely to remain uh, relevant. You, you can see how it is. If you look at it in, in that model, you find out it could be very nice. And then, but there's a, spe a special model that can work now, I tell you, that uh, we may have a, a common facility whereby we can share things in common. If you have a common facility, you can produce uh, at a common facility. And then you may also have a cluster whereby there's a, a kind of a modular way of powering that, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, cluster. And then when you put the model of a clustering, uh, having industry in a particular cluster or having a, a, a shared facility, that could actually reduce some of this uh, gap that, be, that, that caused due to uh, uh, increase in, uh, in the price of a diesel or a geo as the case may be. So if we do that, I think that could be able to mitigate some of those actions. But I must tell you that we must look inward first and foremost before we begin to look outside. So those things you need to do inside, you must do it. You must make sure that you, you maximize promise, a profit and cut, and cut out every excesses that will bring the business down. I tell you, the business is already on his nails, and then the actions you will take. And then as an entrepreneur, it's important for the survival of your business. So you must take it very serious. Okay, now let's also look at credit accessibility and interest rates now. The CBN at the start of this month agreed that the central bank would leave interest rates at 5% per annum for critical sectors and manufacturing industries until March next year. This decision followed the MPC's resolution at the rate when it raised the rate at 13%. Now, with all of these rate increases, it's just natural to expect a lead uh, an increment in the lending rates across board. But to what extent do you see this aid in the survival of MSMEs and other critical sectors, leaving this rate at 5%? Uh, it is important you made mention of that, that, that uh, uh, PMC have, uh, uh, have put that in, 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 in place, and then it's just a statement. But what is the reality on ground? It is difficult to assess uh, uh, funding in Nigeria. It is very difficult. And then if you look at it, uh, commercial banks are not lending to industries. Commercial, loan, uh, uh, commercial banks are not lending to industries. And then commercial banks are not lending to even to uh, enterprises. So at this moment, they are not lending to. And then government have to have an in, the intervention fund, maybe a uh, uh, 220 billion uh, MSME fund that have been made available by the CBN. If I, that, I will ask you how many, how many of uh, 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 industries that have benefited from that, from that system. If I that, we have to look at how to cut down the, the what's it called now? We have to cut down the corruption in the system. The way that the real sector people should be able to receive and have access to this fund. And then the process by which these funds are being uh, received should be transparent. Should be transparent. And then, and if it is well monitored, if I that. At, at the stand today, we have a high level of non-performing loans. And then non-performing loans is because you have given some of these loans to the, the wrong people. We must have a, a criteria to receive this loan and have it done. And then if we get it right, if I, I tell you, we found out that the, the, the interest rate at 5% as CBN have said, and then uh, by, by the authority, we found out that I tell you, it's just a statement. It's not practical. And then if they want to, if they want the financial policy, to me with the uh, physical policy, we must look at it together and make Nigeria work. Because Nigeria must go back to production. If we cannot produce, the economy cannot go anywhere. And nothing happens. Mm. I like the fact that you also bring into focus the MSME Survival Fund as well. Now, really your anticipation versus the implementation process. What to see play out in terms of the simplification of this process and how well people can access funds and much more. We've had this lingering issue where MSMEs continue to complain of perceived bureaucracy. We've had that accessing funds from the Bank of Industry, all of these reports filtering in. What's your take on how simplified these processes should be and how clear, transparent, and easy they ought to be for MSMEs to be able to have the necessary booster support? Yes, your question is very, very right. Uh, first and foremost, the, the process is not transparent. I tell you, the process is not very transparent. We need to 
to be more transparent in, 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 in process of some of this intervention fund. But when you look at the uh, 220 billion MSME funding with CBN, and then that is being uh, 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 disbursed by uh, 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 Bank of Industry and other commercial banks, it's very difficult for people to have access to it. Uh, we must stay even let them come out and tell us how many of our of, of, uh, uh, industries have received these uh, intervention funds and then how many have actually were been able to have uh, fed their businesses. Uh, it is very important because if we don't do that, if we don't have the statistics of those who have received and then those who, who and then the process, and then because the process of receiving this fund should be, should be su uh, swift and then should be easy for uh, MSMEs because when you look at it, the, the ab ab about uh, uh, start, uh, 65 percent of our, of our businesses are informal. So how do we do all this? How do we make sure that this informal sector and then who are the, actually the driver of the economy and then the, the small scale industrialists who are actually the actual driver of the economy have access to that ambiguity, without a, a bureaucracy? That is a key uh, hindrance to making sure that M uh, MSM is receiving this funding.